Hello, my name is Tridar. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a medieval tavern in Minecraft. Let's get started. So let's take a quick look at the exterior of our medieval tavern, as you would expect out of a medieval building. Of course, the roof's overhanging the foundation by quite a bit. And it's, except for the walls and the chimneys and the floors, uh, the rest of it is entirely made of wood, so, you know, it's 100% flammable. So do bear that in mind if you have, like, fire tech on on your server or in your world or anything. Uh, it's a pretty cozy, uh, rusticated style of building, though. We do have a lot of uh, detail with a lot of trapdoors and stairs and everything. But in good medieval fashion, we, of course, do have a more uh, a rusticated overall appearance of the building. Very, very brown and gray. As you would expect. Of course, you can see uh, two chimneys, which let you know that we do have two fireplaces on the interior. So uh, let's land and go on the porch here and take a look inside. So here is our very cozy interior, I think, of our medieval tavern. Over here we have our large arched fireplace. Plenty of place uh, for uh, campfires back there. Uh, three or six, depending on however, however many you want to add. Uh, a couple of uh, hanging light fixtures. A, a nice uh, barrel vaulted uh, car ceiling in here, though. Quite like that. A uh, little uh, side area over here, perhaps if you want to add perhaps a, a bar here. Be a good place for that. And over here we have a smaller area with a, with a smaller fire, with some shelves, another, another hanging light fixture. Back here, slightly separated off. By some arches from the main area. You know, it's it's not a huge tavern. It's it's more of a, of a little tavern that you would find, uh, perhaps uh, on your way uh, traveling somewhere, out in the wildlands. Just a little refuge. You can imagine like um, the the winter storm is howling outside. Uh, but on the inside here, if you want to build some chairs and everything, I'm going to let you decorate it. But if you want to build some chairs and some couches or whatever. You can imagine that you are seated in here drinking your your big glass of mead with your with your smoked meats and, and your fine cheeses, um, uh, conversing with your traveling companions. Good times. Uh, let's go uh, up, upstairs here. We just have a simple ladder access. We do have we have uh, f uh, about five rooms up here in the attics as well. In good medieval fashion, of course, uh, they, they, they don't make a whole lot of sense. They've got, uh, you know, various various nooks and crannies to, to crawl around in. They aren't even quite completely level. Some of them take a little bit of work to get into. Uh, but, you know, it's a uh, good medieval architecture. Things, uh, things don't quite make uh, a lot of sense. Depending on how they're laid out, you want to have uh, you want to have a quirky building, uh, and we do have one little room over here as well. This would be like uh, I suppose the cheapest accommodation back here. But you know, remember these are medieval times. We are lucky to have a roof over our head at all out in the wildlands in in our small and cozy uh, medieval tavern here. Uh, if you want to build like a, a tavern for the, the upcoming Christmas season, this this would be a great build for that. If you perhaps have a Christmas village somewhere that you would like to add one of these to, this would be, this would be a good place for that. Uh, but it's also a, a bit of a generic tavern as well. You can put this just anywhere you would like to have a tavern. Just, you know, along your road, out in the wildlands somewhere. You could put it as part of a village too. A village tavern. It's, it's quite a good size for that as well. I don't know about a city tavern, but I will leave it up to you to decide exactly exactly how you want to put it together. Uh, so with that, in the opening uh, slide of the video, you've seen the dimensions and the materials list. By the way, the dimensions are going to be including the, the, the roof overhangs behind my head uh, back there. So, uh, with that, let's start here at the porch, and we will do the, the numbering um, uh, for the foundation. Uh, so, we want to place down first uh, four blocks of cobbled deep slate, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
and then another four, and then two here. Go ahead and place the cobblestone stairs in front of this now, and then count for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, another three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then three. Three again, two, three, four, five, six. I think that was six, right? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. And then two, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And, uh, oh, got a lot of eggs around here. I guess Mr. Chicken has been busy. Uh, I guess that'd be Mrs. Chicken. Uh, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then two more, and that brings us all the way uh, back around uh, to the front where we started. So that's your foundation level. You want to count the numbers, not not counting the chicken. You want to count the numbers of the foundation we laid out uh, three times because you know it's 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 literally foundational. So that would be good to do. Um, now let's zoom in here. I've laid out only the, the visible sections of the checkerboard pattern that we saw inside. Uh, the rest of it, the walls are going to be sitting on top of that. So I would lower it down here if you want to. If you want to count? Most of these are going to be just two blocks away from the uh, exterior of the wall right there. And uh, once you have paused and done all of that, uh, we can go on here to our second phase. Of course, we're going up one block slice at a time, as we typically do. Uh, now here we have an awful lot of uh, uh, spruce um, uh, tree trunks and uh, trap doors around our spruce trap doors all the way I guess these are actually oak oak logs and spruce trap doors all the way around those and you want to do that for three of these and of course like a good medieval build our building is of course non-symmetrical we don't we could draw a center line here and depending on I mean we could replicate if you wanted to get um, just as an aside if you wanted to get more than one tavern design out of this I didn't think about showing you until now, but if we draw a line right down the middle here, it passed through that fireplace, and if we build the right side twice, in other words, we mirror it, we could have a slightly bigger tavern with three chimneys, or if you only wanted one chimney tavern, a really small tavern, you could divide the center line in the same place, just right through here, and build the left side, and then mirror that on the right side as well instead of building, building that over there. That would give you, oh, uh, that would give you um, uh, three designs of tavern, I suppose. I don't think there would be uh, much downside in doing that. I'm pretty sure that'll work with the central section. And let's, yeah, yeah, that that would that would work pretty good. I don't have any models to show you, but that's just something I was thinking about. Because this is usually the point in the video where I will talk about the center line. Veterans of previous tutorials already know all about that. So I just wanted to mention something as a little bonus for you that perhaps you want, um, if you want to have build maybe three taverns or just two taverns, you can do slightly different designs or just build the same tavern however many times. But anyway, continuing on. Uh, so between these, we've just uh, got a simple intercolumation distance of three blocks. Or the the pillars on these things. In fact, most things in here are going to be spaced three blocks apart. Not all things, but most of them. You can see behind that here. We have another th uh, another three, just three blocks of space there. And then another three here. We'll start uh, we'll start right here at the doorway, and then we'll circuit around the building. We'll first take a look at the exterior. And then the interior. It's pretty simple patterns. You're just laying down a uh, cobbled deep slate and tree trunks, a bit of tuff here and there, and a whole bunch of trap doors.
right here. Remember we've got uh, one little space cut out here for our ladder access. This building wasn't really big enough for a full twisting stairwell, so we just did a simple ladder. I think it's pretty good about what you would get for like a, a, a good medieval tavern. Or even a bit earlier than that, this would make good Anglo-Saxon or Viking-style tavern, I suppose, with all the details. It, it kind of looks like that. Although the, the chimneys you wouldn't find in a Viking or an Anglo-Saxon tavern. They, the, those weren't invented until quite a lot later than that. De definitely after the year 1000 is when we uh, would start getting uh, chimneys start appearing in buildings here and there. Uh, so, take a look at the interior. You can, if you laid out the, uh, a checkerboard pattern on the floor with a, a cobble deep slate and a tuff, you can kind of guess where all of these, uh, interior columns are going to be going. A couple of walls and half slabs here for our, uh, hearth. And a couple of, uh, interior pillars as well. In fact, just one. Otherwise, the rest of them, as you can kind of see here, are going to end up being uh, pilasters, really. We have like uh, three pillars on the front, one interior pillar, and the rest of them are just all pilasters. Alright, so let's take a look at that entire sequence from the top down. So you can see that all in profile. And let's slide on over to the next phase. So the next phase is going to be quite a bit easier because we spent a whole bunch of time on the foundation and the next level. And this one, we are just stacking up uh, mostly uh, the walls and the pillars. You can see with the, the oak tree trunks right there. And then you can go, can go ahead and install your door if you want to as well. And we'll start at the door and kind of scan around. We do have, you know, we do, um, the windows here with the fences. Uh, if you want to upgrade this to perhaps some stained glass, you can do that. It would be a good color for this building. A light blue is always my favorite stained glass, but perhaps, uh, perhaps some orange stained glass. You might give that a try, or may maybe even some brown or some gray, depending on whatever your favorite color stained glass. I wouldn't go with like, you know, like, like, uh, lime. Probably want to veer away from that. You know, something that would match the rest of the color palette is what I'm trying to say. All right, there we are. Now, while they did have glass in the medieval times, it was uh, it was for the um, more expensive buildings. You wouldn't really find that in an inn or a tavern. You would mostly get uh, a, a latticework windows like we have here, and then just shutters on the exterior, which you can add some doors, or some uh, more trap doors on the exterior if you want to add some shutters. To the building, you can just, uh, you can just probably put a trap door right there in front. Of that to simulate a closed shutter is what you can do for some of the windows. It, it would look interesting. Just as an aside. But as you can see here, the interior is pretty much what you would expect. Extending up all of the walls and all of the um, oak uh, tree trunk pillars and everything. So next phase after that, we're doing much the same thing. On the front here, as you can see, behind that, we are extending up all of those and uh, the walls behind those and the windows as well with their um, uh, fence lattice work. But quite a lot of uh, tough and cobbled deep slate in this. Some of my favorite blocks. Uh, if you want to make like a rusticated medieval build, those, uh, the any of the more coarse woods and everything will uh, do very good for that. I didn't use any of the stripped in here. Uh, you can if you want to. You could, um, some of the interior logs, if you want to, you can strip them. 
Uh, oak is a bit light for that though. If you wanted to have stripped interior logs, I would change out the interior tree trunks in there to spruce and then strip those. Uh, but uh, I will let you decide exactly how you want to do that. Of course, you're always free to change materials. Just what I present here is a suggested materials list. All right, let's take a look at everything from the inside real quick. We do have some upside down stone brick stairs here for a little lintel over our hearth. Of course, it's done out of cobblestone. If you are going to go with a stripped log interior, you might want to change out some of the interior cobble to um, a polished andesite. It's probably what I would go with. It would pair with the stripped stuff a little bit nicer than the rougher cobble. Uh, same thing, upside down cobblestone stairs here for our smaller hearth off to the side. A couple of stairs there for a little, uh, some little shelving. Units on either side of the, the hearth. And we will go on to the next phase here. Uh, so next phase, extend up all of your tree trucks. You can go ahead and just stack up those all the way around the building. Like that there. And then on uh, uh, all the visible sides of those, we want to put the spruce trap doors like that there. Uh, all four sides, three at the front, and then here for the, the uh, plasters on the side walls. Got a little window over our door there. Otherwise, we're capping off all of our windows with uh, cobbled deep slate and tuff. All right, that's scanning around the exterior. Now let's take a look inside, see if there's any extra details we need to take a look at. Uh, we do have in the middle of the room here, we have our little wooden chandelier hanging down. Uh, let's see if we want to count from here for one, two, three blocks of air and then just place your five spruce fences right there. All right, now let's take a look at the next phase here. Now, I, li I like to, once I build these little plasters and uh, pillars or whatever, I like to connect them just like so, with some stairs here and another, another trap door. It gives us a very pleasing uh, three block wide archway, just like so, you know, with some tra uh, three trap doors and two stairs, just like that here. And if we uh, rotate that and build it a couple of times, we can get some nice carved archways, just like that there. So let's uh, get a little altitude. And take a look at that. We do have a couple of um, uh, fences hanging out over here, though. Take a look at the front first. I wonder why there's not a fence here. I really almost think there should be. Oh, that's missing. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I will update the, the, the fence with uh, the right number. For this, but where this torch is, you want to place another, another spruce fence, right there. I mean, it's just a small detail, but all right. And then scanning around the building, of course, as you can see, we're connecting all of our three-block uh, uh, plasters here with the the upside-down stairs and the trap door. Uh, some places where we only have two spaces, so we just skip the trap door and have the stairs face each other for a very small arch.
Otherwise, as you can see, we're repeating the pattern again here, here, and here. And then just two stairs back there. A bit more for back of the uh, big chimney here. Two more stairs there, and another, another two, three block wide modules right there. And then two more on the side of the building back here. All right, now let's head inside the building and land and take a look at all this from the bottom, I think, is the best way to view this one, probably. Uh, we do have just a big beam going straight across here with, um, what, five, five trap doors? It's like so. Otherwise, you can see the pattern on the inside continues. It's like so. And then right here in the, the middle of the building as well. We are going to have another one of these. Let's count from here. Four, uh, what, one, two, three blocks of air, and then another wooden, wooden chandelier here. On your other chandeliers, you can go ahead and place down your torches if you prefer. Uh, you can also uh, upgrade these to uh, candles. Would be, would be pretty nice to put on top of these. Or if you want to, you can put uh, put some nice warm uh, lanterns on top of these as well. I've just thrown down some nice cheap torches. Uh, but, you know, like I said, with the materials and uh, changing them out, you can put candles here or you can put uh, lanterns. I think lanterns would look quite nice or candles, e either one, really. You can always put uh, uh, lanterns back here where these torches are or some more candles. Or, you know, another another lan uh, candle or lantern up there as well. And, of course, your, um, your campfire, one or two, however many you want, back here and your uh, hearth. All right, so let's take a look at this uh, section nice and slow. Continue to extend up your ladder for the attic access. Uh, upside down, stair right there and here. And otherwise, the interior details, as you can see, they're pretty much very uh, repetitious. This is one of these uh, builds that has a lot of symmetrical parts, but the overall whole is uh, asymmetric. Rather pleasing in that way, I think. Let's go on to the next phase here. Start at our porch. So we do have some overhanging uh, sections here. like that, to support our, our eaves of our roof. And behind here, you can see we're connecting all of the uh, 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 oak uh, tree trunks, the vertical ones, with uh, three blocks horizontal now, just like that there. And in between these, we have spruce half slabs, nine of those. Right there for our porch. Here's the next set of detailing at the front. Take a look at that from below. You can see pretty much every other block we're doing a trapdoor and an upside down stair. And then not back here though, we just got the, the transverse sections with the logs. Just like so. Detail back here for the lowermost portion of our chimney. And as you can see here, just alternating every other one, upside down uh, stair, and a trap door. Nothing along this side over here, except for the uh, horizontal um, tree trunks. Let's take a look at that entire section from above. And then a little closer in from the interior. So down here, we do have a couple of overhanging sections. And you want to be using the, the full bark blocks for those. Right there. And in here, we've just got uh, one horizontal cross member. 
uh, finishing off the arch over our fireplace with the cobblestone. You can go ahead and place down your torches or your candles or your lanterns for that chandelier in here and just extend that one up there. You can see these are hanging at different heights as we have a higher vaulted room in here so we hang this one a block higher than that one. It's just a simple, it's a, it's a, um, you know, medieval and rusticated. So we didn't, we didn't go with the fancy chandelier. We went with the good old, uh, uh, a wooden fence chandelier. And then in this little room here, you can see we're just laying down horizontal and vertical oak tree trunks. All right, let's move on to the next section where we're capping off most of the rooms. We're adding the ceilings to those and uh, some portions of the room. This little awkward room you remember I crawled into. That's That's right over... This section here but let's scan around the exterior first and then we'll take a look inside most of this is going to be uh, oak uh, probably oak bark blocks I think and a whole lot of trap doors Alrighty, so let's take a look uh, on the interior now. In fact, let's let's start in the middle here, actually. So we can orientate ourselves with our little chandelier that we've been building. Want to extend that up. And then we've got, uh, I believe these are spruce tree trunks on their sides. To give us a little, you know, a little carved detail. Up here in our tavern. Just because it's medieval doesn't mean it has to be completely undecorated. We do can, we can have some carved detail now, now and then inside of our tavern. And then over here, I think all along the edges here, that's gonna be full blocks of spruce. But right here in between these squares, that's gonna be half slabs. Spruce half slabs, so we can kind of see. We've got, you know, we can see we've got the tree trunks on their sides here as well, the spruce. For those, just to give us the, you know, just a little card detail, something nice to look at up there on the roof, or rather the, the, the ceiling. Uh, over here we've got our ladder coming up right there, and we've got, of course, same sort of detailing that we took a look at over here. We've got over here as well. With the oak beams, the spruce half slabs, and the spruce tree trunks on their sides. All right all along through there. Uh, do note, we do have a, a upside-down stair right here. And that's just because of how the ladder, it's that block right there. It's an upside-down stair. Um, that was just because we didn't, we didn't have any more space between the, the roof and where the ladder came out. So we had to kind of, you know, have a little awkward, uh, awkward landing for our stair there, just so we could wiggle our way into the attic. Uh, but it's a medieval building, so we can get away with things like that. It's, uh, it's, just, it's part of the charm of the building. All right, next phase. We are building now uh, just the central, the central vaulted section in there and uh, the roof and its associated room. So things are going to get a little bit more complicated. So we're going to start right here at the front, right here. And we will scan around the building. and put in the, the sections. Now because this is meant to be kind of a medieval building, I didn't, I could have gone with a more complicated and curvy roof design here and used a whole bunch of hash slabs and different materials. Uh, but for this one, I thought simpler really looked better when I tried it. So for the roof tiles, we're just really going with uh, dark oak, just full blocks of dark oak, kind of like a, a big dark oak uh, shingles. 
as it were. Of course, we're going to take a look at the exterior first and then the interior uh, after that. Upside down stairs. Right there, and I believe there as well. And another one here. Otherwise, as far as roof goes, it's it's got it's got detail to it, but it doesn't have um it's not too complicated. Alright, so let's take a look here in this room right behind our entrance right there below us. And hmm. yeah. thought for a moment I'd skip to things. All right, so let's take a look at the interior detailing for the central barrel vaulted section. Let's take a look at that from below, I think would be the best way. All right. Now let's take a look at the chimney behind that. Simple detailing for that. And then let's take a look at the room that's off to our left. And note the stair uh, right there. And there's another stair directly across from it right over here in this room, which of course got our, our room with the ladder access. So use that to orientate yourself. Like so, and we will go on to the next phase. So let's start back here at the front on the exterior for our eaves, of course. We've got more stairs and, and trap doors right there. And then some simple detailing for the roof. We do have now, we've got, uh, this roof has, uh, what, four, four dormers in it, which is it's just, uh, just windows in the roof, that's all that is. And so this is where we're going to be building that. I did those to, to make our roof look a little bit more interesting, but also to add some, some, you know, it, it just looked better. Uh, broke up the, the flat texture of the roof a bit better, I thought, since we weren't curving it. Detailing right here, and it's uh, the same detailing right here, just mirrored. All right, bit of detailing there, stairs and half slabs, well, stairs and trap door, I should say. As you can see, we've made rather extensive use of uh, trap doors on this particular building. Medieval buildings, they, they like to have a lot of trap doors on them. All right, so we're back at the entrance where we started. So let's tuck down in here into this little room right here. Just got some upside down stair detailing. And then we are of course capping off our uh, wooden barrel vault right here. And let's take a look at that from below. You can see we've just got the uh, bark blocks going straight across here and then the spruce planks 
on either side. All right, let's uh, start over here in the room with the ladder. Let's get uh, take a look at our ladder to orientate ourselves. We actually finished our ladder, and we want to have a, a dark oak half slab. Just one. It's like the only dark oak half slab in the building. Right there above our ladder. All right, so that's that room. Now back here, we have another stair so we can crawl over our barrel vault to get to our other room. Take a look at the barrel vault section from the top down and then simple detailing back there for the chimney. Now let's go across into the room directly across from that one. There's some Really simple detailing in here. It's mostly rafters is really all that's in the it's 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 uh, in the roof. Uh, back over here though, we do have our our small little room. Back here over our entrance. Wait, I already looked at this, didn't I? Yes. Sorry. Uh, so I think that's all that is. So we can go on to our next phase over here. So let's start. Let's just throw down that there's a marker and start at the front here. Pretty simple detailing now. Right here for our roof. Uh, here we've got some fences and trap doors here for our little uh, window dormers. Another one here. Just a straight beam across there. Another window dormer there. That brings us around to the front. So let's take a look in this little room here, which of course has got more, more upside down spruce stairs here for the uh, the roof rafters to support our dark oak and everything. Uh, right behind that, we are capping off now. Uh, the The interior is now done of the, of the first floor anyway. Uh, we're capping off our uh, um. Uh, barrel vaults down there with uh, six half slabs right here. Twelve in total, six there, six there, spruce half slabs right on top of that. I'm going to break a couple so you can see. All right? Right there. And then behind that, we've got the rest of the de detailing for the room. Okay, now let's go over here, take a look at the room with the ladder access in it. From the inside, we've got more upside down stairs here, of course, you know, for our rafters. Like so, now we want to head the, from there directly across to this room over here where we've got the same sort of detailing. And then back here for our chimney, we have this this the very little room I talked about as well, where we've got six more spruce half slabs right there, right above uh, what's going to be our our big hearth, right there. So even this is even though this is a small room, it's right by the the chimney, so it's going to be pretty warm. And uh, that room over there would be pretty warm too as well. The others would be a bit colder, I think. That one over there would be especially cold. So maybe you could charge more for this room, actually. Even though it's smaller, it would be warmer. This is probably the budget room. 
because it's hard to get into and it'd be colder. But you know, if, you, if it's medieval times, I'm sure you have a lot of uh, a lot of fleeces that you can find yourself up in. Uh, to stay warm, so and perhaps a few dogs to sleep with too. Uh, so here we have um, uh, next level. Next level up. Let's just throw down a marker there, so we can kind of easier tell where we're at. A couple of uh, trap doors there, and otherwise we're getting ready to seal off uh, this little room here at the front, the cold room anyway, the the, the colder room. Could be better than being outside, I suppose. Now let's scan around the exterior, take a look at the detailing. All right, now let's take a look at this from the interior of the building. In fact, let's just uh, drop right down in there and take a look at this. A couple of half slabs, I think, right along there. I think that's going to end up being four half slabs for right there. And then back in the, the central room here. Take a look at the room with the ladder. All right, now directly across from that room, let's take a look at the detailing in this one. Pretty simple. And our warm and toasty room back here at the back. Do remember to leave a couple of torches in your attic uh, as well as we go. You don't want to have things spawning up here. One creeper would, uh, would ruin your day. Take out quite a large chunk of a wooden building, I think. Let's go on to the next phase. So we've only got a few phases left, really. We're going to be sealing off. Uh, we've sealed off this little front room here, which is the simple detailing, like so. And some detailing for the, the dormers right here, upside down. Spruce stairs, we're going to have four of those. Oh, this, um, this stair here, well, I can't put a torch on it, this stair in between these two torches, this should be upside down. I don't know why it's, uh, I, I didn't catch that. Well, there, there's always, you know, there, there, there's always something in, in the building that, that, that I don't notice that we always have to fix during a tutorial and, and this is the one it's the one, one stair is out of place otherwise everything else is pretty good all right so let's land and take a look at these rooms from below we got this is the room with a ladder 
we've got all the upside down stairs here for rafters, pretty much every other block. Right there, let's move in to the central section here. We've got more upside down stair rafters as well. Let's go into this room here. Same sort of deal. Right there. And uh, this room underneath, if I can wiggle into it. This room underneath here, this is now finished. It's the, uh, the room over the entrance. And let's go over to here, our warm and toasty room back here by the fireplace. Now we do have a couple of uh, half slabs over here. That's because our, our entrance is here, so we had to, uh, we were already bumping our head on everything, so we had to simplify that a little bit. Let's go on to the next phase here. We're getting pretty close. It's going to be getting easier and easier now, really. Let's start right back here at the front, as we have been doing. Of course, want to have our roof, you know, the roof peak, we want to have that overhang quite a, uh, quite a lot from the foundation, as medievalers tend to do. Although that was mostly because they could... Uh, they could buy a small plot of land and build a small ground floor and then just overhang and stack them as they got taller. So they, you know, they were trying to, uh, trying to save some money, I suppose. All right, and then behind that, just down the central section of the building, we are placing more rafters, which are going to be uh, upside down spruce stairs and then a spruce half slab right in the middle. And you can see pretty much every other one, except for these dividing walls where they're full blocks. That is, uh, that's what we're doing. Take a look on the inside in a moment. Let's see, this here is the room with the ladder in it. Oh, that's what uh, that looks like. Here we have our central room. And then the room directly across from that. And then we have our, our just our very little room tucked back in here by the fireplace. All right, next phase. We're really in the home stretch now. Finishing off uh, this section here. Right there. With uh, bark blocks, and we have just some little decorative uh, uh, finials on the ends of the, the roof beams. In fact, there's no, there's no real interior to look at anymore, so we're just going to be looking at exterior now. Uh, back here, you can see all of these are going to be uh, spruce half slabs, uh, right on top in between these, uh, these transverse oak beams. All right, let's take a look at that from the top down and slide on over to the next phase. Pretty easy. We're just going to be starting at the front here. Just a couple of details like so. 
And then back here along the central section of the building, we're just placing down this three block wide section here with some connecting uh, spruce um, bark blocks there to the uh, dormers. Otherwise, it's just all planks and beams on their sides. And our chimneys. And an upside down stair. Same sort of detail laying along here. Another upside down stair. And so on. That's an, I was an upside down stair there as well. Let's go on to our next phase here. Uh, so the front, th this is all finished. Now we're taking a look at just a central section of the building. We just want to do a straight run of bark blocks all the way down the, the length of the building like so and extending up our chimneys like that there. And then this one at the back as well. It's just simple detailing. Like so. Next phase after that, we want to do pretty much the same thing. A couple of planks right there, spruce planks, all the way down the middle. Build the chimney and same deal on this end down here. And back here at the back as well. Alright, uh, next phase after that, just some simple detailing. A couple of planks here and two blocks there on that end. And this end, to finish those off, a bit more of the chimney though. Right there, not, uh, what, eight blocks is tough? And uh, however many blocks of tough this is. Like so. And we can do the same detailing back here as well for that. I think uh, now we've done all the wood, so the only thing left is going to be our chimneys, which of course, you know, it's it's, it's, it's nice and big in case, you, 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 in case, you know, in case you want to have Santa drop in on you. On Christmas, you have a nice chimney for him to do that, although I don't know if he visits taverns, though, so you, you may be out of luck on that one. Uh, no, more detailing for the chimney back here, cobbled deep slate and then upside down stone, uh, cobblestone stairs. On all four sides, same deal back here for the larger chimney. Right there on all four sides of that. Uh, next phase after that, we want to do uh, cobbled deep slate again, and then cobblestone half slabs. Uh, on top of all the upside down stone, uh, cobblestone stairs. Just like so. And then once you have done that, your very last thing you have to do is put uh, another layer of cobbled deep slate for the big chimney and the small chimney. And then once you have done that, your medieval tavern will be complete.